So it looks like we have Lemon versus Deacons coming up on the stream right now. I think they're playing right now. Yep, yeah, looks like players have gone through their button checks. Or are they doing it? No, no. <laughs> yeah, they're still doing their button checks, so they're getting themselves ready. So Lemon on player one and Deacons on player two. So let's see how this goes. I believe these are all losers matches now because the winners top we've, four. We've played three winners. We've yeah. played three winners now. The winner side of top eight has been locked. So it looks like we're going through losers this time now. Oh, Seeing some good showing. Some good showing so far. Really solid. I mean, especially seeing as this is like the game came out so recently. It's not even been a week. The it's not even been a week. The quality of play we've seen has been really superb. I mean, I'm, I'm glad so many people have come out. So it's been a 64-player bracket. It's a double elimination format. We've mentioned winners and losers. The guys that have won all of their matches are now comfortably, four of them are comfortably waiting for the top eight to be played. And those that have lost a single match are now in what is called the losers bracket. So um, you get two chances in tournament. Uh, some of the guys that have already lost their first match but have continued to win from there from then on in and now fighting other people in the losers bracket and if you lose while in this bracket you go home so all of these matches up until um, the top eight will be loser goes home yeah. so a much a bigger increase in uh, pressure I suppose I mean typically you do kind of see that losers bracket matches do tend to be a lot more uh, sort of stressful I guess I could it's say because they are really you, yeah. you haven't got the comfort of a match behind you but at the same time you know because people know that's what's on the line some people do literally just, you know, they turn it on. It's like a light switch. They just flick it on when it comes to losers and bam, you know. I think we're going into the match now. It doesn't seem to, uh, no longer is it a button check. They've gone straight in. I'm not really sure how to call this matchup. I mean, we've got full auto Jackie Briggs. This is, can be considered a bit more of a ranged variation. Um, but you see a lot of sort of Jackie Briggs players using the, that machine gun right there. Uh, they use that as more of like a sort of a distance based option to just keep the opponent at a specific distance. Sub-Zero though, no slouch either. Uh, this is Grandmaster Sub-Zero. It's pretty much the sort of go-to variation for Sub-Zero players. We're definitely seeing more of Grandmaster than anything else right now. I think it's the safety of the clone and just the options that, it's not even what it gives you, what it shuts down from the other player is really appealing to a lot of players. But a good thing about, well I'll say a good thing, an interesting thing about this matchup is Jackie Briggs Machine Gun doesn't actually break the Ice Clone. So it's not like Sub-Zero can, you know, go for the trades behind it as well because, you know, normally projectiles destroy it, but hers doesn't. So it's a question of, you know, who gets the life lead, who can sit on it better. But both players have been quite aggressive right now. It looks like neither of them want to play very patiently. It's quite strange because, I mean, Sub-Zero, especially in Grandmaster, is a corner character, right? So he's going to put the opponent in the corner, he's going to put the Ice Clone up, and then make it a complete headache for the opponent to get back out uh, and just kind of keep them there the whole game. Uh, we saw a lot of use for Glue. He's currently playing Grandmaster as well. He puts the opponent in the corner and then just keeps that pressure on constantly. Yeah, that um, sort of token Grandmaster pressure that we see so much. And they're stuck in there for the rest of the game. Um, a complete opposite here. They're both players sort of just sitting mid-screen. Neither players are sort of pushing anyone into one area. They're very even on life right now. I mean, you know, Jackie Briggs is down on meter, but Sub-Zero does have that parry on deck effectively right now. Uh, trying to press buttons in the middle of the block string. Just slides to get out of the corner. Doesn't want to deal with that. It cost him the bar, but he's out the corner. And yeah, he, just, he, just, he wants the space to work with more than anything. Exactly. Else. Sometimes it's not It's not about the damage, and sometimes it's not even the fact that you're... Ooh, it's not even the fact your move has armor. It's just the positioning that you get. Um, Jackie eating a lot of freezes here. Brilliant break right there. Definitely decides to try and take the whole match. Could have conceded it there and kept the meter. Decides to go with it, and he does lose the second round. So the, uh, the somewhat risky breaker does not pay out in the end. But they are both sitting at no bars right now, so you know the meter is even again at least. It's always a nice way to go. Um, it's not as stressful in the final round if both opponents are sitting on the same bar because then it's back to an even playing field. If you're in like another, if you're in another round and the opponent has like full bar and you have none, that's quite a hill to climb, even in the space of one game. Just for the uh, anti-air rockets, predicts a full screen jump. And there's that machine gun. Would like to see him using that a bit more when he's got the life lead. It does let, you know, he is letting Sub Zero get in quite close, quite a lot. See, what you're seeing here is um, the Ice Clone is disappearing because Sub Zero is taking damage. If Sub Zero is hurt while the Ice Clone is up, it will disappear straight away. So, one of the ways around that is to hurt him as he's casting it. And just like that. Just, just like, like, like that, that, yeah. He went in to try and um, get some pressure on the go. There we go. This is what I want to see. Lemon making the most of that machine gun now. Still going in, though. Still wants to get right in the face. He needs to watch out. Exactly that. Watch out for a jump, and that's going to take the first game. So what he acknowledged there was Sub-Zero is jumping out of the corner a lot. So he chucks out a preemptive uppercut, catches that jump, not only keeps him in the corner, but wins him the round. The uppercuts do a chunky 14% in this game. That's, that, that's nothing to, you know, to be too shy about. So it's a question of just making sure that, yep, he's got barely any health left, and the uppercut's all I need. Bam, there you go. First game. One go straight for to Lemon. Brave start from Sub-Zero, does go into the forward 3-3, goes straight to the low, gets the first hit, 
And now he has bagged himself a break and an extra bar of meter. Here's the interesting thing about the run button, though. Obviously, the run button is a, uh, a new mechanic to this game. The opponent can now forward dash and cancel that dash by pressing the right trigger or the R2, your block button, essentially. Um, and your dash becomes a run, and it will start draining the stamina. The interesting thing about the stamina bar in this game is that when Sub-Zero freezes the opponent, he can now close in that full screen distance with a dash into a full combo, rather than having to just dash in and do something like a slide. It makes his freeze game much more prominent and scary. Um, it, not only can, is that, but a full screen freeze will then carry into the corner from the follow up combo, and then when they're in the corner, they really struggle to get out. He's got some more preemptive uppercuts on the go. I'm not sure if that's an input error on the machine gun or if that's just a really straight up read. Oh, it does play good footsies with a sweep to beat that overhead. All not important breaker. Oh, he spends two bars! Two bars on two expensive. slides that neither of which connect. And then the third right there for the slide. That one did connect. Will he get capitalized? Yes, he does. See, right there, here's the interesting thing. He, he's jumping in to close the space, but he could close in the space much faster if he runs instead. It's very interesting just, match here. It might be just be a question of knowing the priority of the air kicks and just trying to, you know, make the most of that, trying to win these air trades. Yeah, potentially. Sub-Zero's jumping attacks are very strong, so... Pushy Lemon does find himself in the corner now against Grandmaster Sub. He's fighting his way out. I feel like he uh, tried to do a clone there and didn't quite get it, so an uppercut came out. There you go. He is mid-screen again. This is much more where he wants to be, but he has just taken those jump kicks. Maybe trying to anti-air and just possibly doing them too late. Neither player are neutral crouching projectiles. If you neutral crouch a projectile, essentially crouching without blocking, uh, the projectile flies over your head. Um, they're crouching, so it's connecting. Um, that's more prominent with Jackie Briggs' machine gun, because she's going to build a lot of bar while you're blocking it, where you could just crouch under it and it'll miss. So he's blocking these miss these uh, machine gun blows, but he could just crouch them. And Jackie's going to build no meter. I mean, she's on full, so it doesn't really matter. That was quite a convincing second game there from Deakins. I mean, Jackie did go down with a full bar of meter. That's just not something you ever want to happen. Especially if you've got the good meter so usage. Fear. I mean, yeah. I'm not too familiar with Jackie Briggs as a character, but I do know that the full auto variation does give her access to some very powerful projectiles. And it's a question of, you know, if you've got that life lead, try and keep it with those. With those. If, if there's space and you're not fearing the uh, the trade, you, maybe, you might have been thinking a slide was coming that would beat the projectiles, but it's a question of, you know, see it before you respect it as an option. Sub-Zero got a lot more ice trades. A lot more ice trades. So Jackie wasn't able to do anything from full screen because she gets frozen. And that's kind of it. He runs in and gets the pressure going. So a lot of these um, overheads by Lemon. And I know Jackie exactly. does have a powerful low string as well, but we're not seeing that. Just the overheads. But he is getting hit by them. Oh, the armor collides! Good challenge on the armor there. Really good challenge. Unfortunately, yeah, the meter burn, the meter burn uh, interaction has more armor than one armored slide, so that pretty much chewed it up. Well, it was a matter damage. of both the hits having a hit of armor, so it yes. was kind of they collided, and then the attack came later on the jar. <laughs> Remember, guys, in Mortal Kombat X, the interactions in the environment do not respawn, so that's now gone but for good. And there we go, another ice trade that could have been really important. He just needs to get in and stay in. Unfortunately, because he does the jumping punch into just the uppercut, he misses out on big damage. That could have been a, a full combo. You Ooh, really do really good jumping, but unfortunately gets uppercut for his You really troubles. do need to make sure that you're maximizing your damage on the touches. I mean, Sub-Zero is quite an easy character to do it with because you see the freeze, you can then, you know, you can move in and do your thing. You want to be getting more than just that damage. You want as much as you can get, especially, you know, when there's this sort of money on the line as well. Again, you know, this is a loser's match. Perhaps both players are feeling, well, you know, I'm just going to go with what's guaranteed. Here's what I'm not a fan of, though. Um, the Sub-Zero uh, Deacons is, he has the clone up, and then he's jumping back. When that clone is in the corner, you keep that pressure on. Like, there's no real reason for you to, to go back. You're giving up that space, which you, you've worked so hard to achieve. Just keep him in the corner, and just keep that pressure going. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, he's pushed him out of the corner. He's got a lot of good hits here. Good block on the X-Ray. I'm not sure if that would have finished the game out. He would have just left himself with zero meter and still down on a life lead. He's that was pretty huge, because not only now the X-Ray whiffed entirely, but Deakins is now going to go into the next round with two, almost two bars, and Jackie has none. But he, he, literally one more hit, one more special, and that is going to be you know a single bar of meter. So a round apiece, this is going down to match point for both of them. So he tries to ice clone, but he's too close, and that's why nothing comes out. Really good call on the meat burn slide, though. The big deal there is that he now has Jackie in the corner. You just want to try these clones, these get those clones on the screen. There he goes, and he's keeping him there. Keep that pressure going. Meter burn interaction, I mean, that's an expensive way to get out the corner, but he's but still it worked. There. You know, if he stayed in the corner, he would have... I mean, he's already down on, like, less than 50% life, but straight back in again. He's this to this is what out. you want to see. You want to see the projectiles just keeping that distance. He's down on life, but just challenge it. Oh, it's so close. I don't know how to call this. Sub-Zero has loads of meter, but... He does get hit by the ice. No, for, again, that, a full combo on that would have killed. I could have been game over, but he just does jumping punch uppercut. That was a big <gasps> deal. 
That's oh. going to close it out. Fantastic stuff. Really good call on the slide there. Such a quick move in this game. This, I think it's the fastest I've ever seen Sub-Zero slide before. That was good. That was good. I mean, it, it was really strange. I didn't know how to call it because it was just back and forth, both players. Neither player sort of maximizing on their damage, and it was more about single hit. So Breaker wasn't very prominent. The combos weren't really there. It was yeah, more jumping punch, uppercut. So it's more so about the use of your meter burn attacks rather than breaking a combo because there really weren't many combos to show. But that was a good match. Yeah, it looks like we are going to be seeing Zalarus Getting again. Getting ready. Yep, Zalarus and Deakins. Oh, brilliant. Sub-Zero versus Kano then? But no, this will be... Um, Deakins was the Sub-Zero player who won yeah, uh, against um, Jackie Briggs. Yes, it was Jackie Briggs. Brilliant. It's strange for me because the only Jackie Briggs experience I have is online and online all Jackie Briggs. And that's Briggs, not real experience. And all Jackie Briggs players do online is sit full screen and shoot the uh, machine gun. I don't care about that because I'm Quan Chi in Summoner. So I crouch it and then go for my meter burn rune from full screen. The knockdown guarantees a bat and then it's party time really. Like but in general, like it, it's, it's a good variation and a, 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 to a lot of people it might seem cheap. But you can crouch neutrally under the machine guns. If you've, got, if you've got the life lead, you don't really have to let her get it back with machine guns. She has to come in still. It's very easy to get frustrated about keep away. Um, you're no doubt going to see keep away here from Zalaris's cybernetic Kano. There's going to be more daggers. It's very easy to dismiss it as being cheap because against the sort of the lower player base or you know people that were newer to games or fighting games, you know it's it's the patience that comes with time. Learning to be a really patient player. Just accept the fact. Work your way in. Crouch a knife. Walk forward. Crouch a knife. Walk forward. He's going to be in the corner. You got 90 seconds on the clock, man. You ain't got to be in any form. You've of got hurry. 90 seconds. What's the rush? You know why do you have to rush in there? Or well, something that something that I, I see a lot of people do that you mustn't do against Jackie Briggs is they block the machine gun bullets. Neutral that, that, crouch. That, that's giving her so much meter by doing that. Just let it go over your head. You see the rock. Another shoot. cheeky down four. I wonder who's down four would win at the start though. Sub zero. Yeah. Well, they're both, they're both very similar down for actually, the two of them. Here's the interesting thing about Kano getting that first hit, though. He has the extra bar to work with for knives. Which he's already used, but he's already built a whole bar with the knives. Oh, he tries to uh, Kano ball the ice ball, but the he kind of charges it a bit too long, I feel. And then just, you know, that's... Does get himself out the corner. Doesn't want anything to deal with. And again, just, just look at that chip damage adding up. And look at his meter. Zalaris is building so much of it right now. Doesn't hit confirm, but only punishes with a slide. That's not really enough damage to make someone respect the option, you know? If I'm only get if I only get punished by a slide, that's not gonna stop me doing a move. I mean, like the, the tiny amount of damage you take is not worth not doing that move. He needs to start punishing it slightly harder. But he's doing well. I mean he's chipping him away. He's not taking loads of damage from the knives. Uh Zalaris is not really being able to get anything up close. Oh wow. Throw up. Oh, Armor straight through the ice ball though. He's gonna spend the bar on the meter slide and not get it. He needs to watch out for that armored slide, and right as I say it, he gets tagged. He by goes it. to the whiff punish back too. Does get backdash and slid for his trouble. Not a bad round though. It's a big question of just waiting for that slide. The slide's coming out so fast in this game. I believe it comes out in four frames, or is it five? I think it's four frames. I could be wrong. That's very quick. Like if you're not ready for it, it's gonna hit you. But just like that, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does knock you down pretty hard. I think he's throwing out a lot of slides. Zalaris needs to start scouting those and punishing them, because you can punish a slide with a full combo. Unfortunately, Zalaris is having to spend a lot of his bar on those meter burn knives. So when he finally lands the hit, he's going to be doing about the sort of 24% mark in terms of meterless damage. That's good damage, but if he's going to keep throwing out slides, it's not enough to really. You know, really make that impact and go, you're not just going to slide at me randomly. I'm going to catch you in this full combo. That was a good use of the EX knives there, though, to beat the Ice Clone. Obviously, Ice Clone absorbing project like a single projectile in this game. So if you throw three, it's going to blow straight through it and still hit you if you try and follow up. I want to see some anti air. I say I want to see some anti air uppercuts, but Sub Zero's jump ins are very strong. I'm not Especially sure his jumping kick. Very hard to anti air. You'll at least trade with it. And there's the punish. He unfortunately drops it. Some tournament nerves coming, I think. Ooh. And there's the meter burn wake up up ball, just for that bit of uh, armor that he took. But as I mentioned, like I said, th there's money on the line here. Some of these players are nervous. Um, Zalaris had two different opportunities to close out that round, and I think Nerves just got the better of him. And he didn't. He took the round, fortunately, but you know that round could have been over much, much before. Don't think he was expecting good throw tech hit. from Deakins there. Really good throw tech. Full screen harassment once again. You can't jump over those knives because they will tag you. This, this is what won it for him before. The only thing is now Sub Zero can slide under that projectile. It's a question of just waiting and reacting. But then, you know, as soon as Zalaris starts waiting for it, then he's not going to get the knives on the screen. It's a question of, you know, it's rock, paper, scissors. You know, what are you going to do? 
Oh, he jumps back to try and bait Sub Zero to come in and then just surprise Kano Ball. That's going to take the first game. Zalarus, one up. Uh, doing really solid here. I mean, the slide isn't as much of an issue anymore. He's punished the slide. Deacons isn't throwing out as many slides, which in turn gives him more room to throw daggers from full screen. So we'll see how this match goes. If Deacons adapts, we might see him trying to be a bit impatient, maybe. Maybe not be so reckless with slides. Starts with a jump in. Always a brave start. If someone's waiting, that is a guaranteed anti air. But you know, we're not seeing any anti airs yet, so it's a question of, yeah, well, if you're not going to stop it, then I'm just not going to stop jumping, mate. He's being patient as well. He's actually waiting for the jump, and then we'll throw the dagger as an anti air. Yes. And then Deacons is also jumping on prediction of knives, and he's getting the kick for it. So both players using these jumps very well right now. Zalaros has the life lead now, spending a lot of meter, a lot of meter on those meter burn daggers. Something we're not really seeing is we're not seeing Deacons really do any clones mid screen to challenge these knives. They don't really do anything, I don't think. If you clone from mid screen, all he's going to do is instantly throw a knife and get rid of it. Like, I'm not sure what there is to gain from it. Meter build. Meter I suppose, meter. I suppose, I suppose there is that. But they come out so quickly. Zalaros all over him here. Unfortunately, not a full combo on that on that Kano ball. Whenever you block a Kano ball, you can get a full combo, which with Sub Zero is around the 30% mark. Well, thing is, Kano can't really wake up without meter. Yeah, he just can't really do it. So, if you build up that meter, get your EX slide on the go, get that hard knockdown, and then move in and try and catch him if he tries to wake up, he's got a block. He really has to block if he has no meter. And because he's using so much meter to throw, you know, the triple knives, then. I just get hit by the eye laser, doesn't capitalize. I just don't think he's ready. If he's blocking it, I think he thinks he's just going to block the eye laser too. So when you see the eye laser connect, you're just not ready for it to hit. Oh, the chip. Look at the chip damage is adding up. This is almost 100% chip and he's almost down 50% already. Zalaris is making a lot of slides with as well, rather than actually block them. Like there, he's jumping back and it's coming out. Whereas if he blocks the slides, he gets a free combo. Good use of the meter burn up ball again. He's literally just trying to keep the space his. And that'll be a combo. He's gonna unfortunately drop the link, but he's still in a good situation. Um, both players spending a lot of meters. Deacon's spending a lot of meter on those meter burn slides. A lot of them are actually missing. So Standard wake up up ball can be That's gonna stuffed. be it, but that is it. That's match for Zalaris. Finishes with a stylish fatality, there we go. I think this fatality sums up what happened in that match quite well. I, I definitely agree. I definitely and there's agree. the EX, there you go. Dead. GG. GG's all around. That's that.